Newberry is very well known, not only on the national stage, but on the international stage for what it does. It's only 426 seats. That is, that's a small house compared to some of its contemporaries. The theater was built in 1881. Newberry at the time was 2,500 people. They decided to spend $30,000 to build a multi-purpose facility. And it is um, of a Victorian look. It's very brick. It's very heavy. It's got that beautiful detail. But it, again, it was multi-purpose in a time period where that was somewhat new. So downstairs, when they finally opened the doors in 1882, after completing it, was the jail, was the firehouse, was the courthouse, was the city council chambers. And it was thriving and bustling. And upstairs was the opera house. So after a $5 million restoration, and it really wasn't a restoration, it was a rehab. Let's bring her up. Let's bring this old woman up to, to, to really show her personality in the modern age. We got the lobby. We had this space up here, which we reconfigured to be more of the original 1880, um, 1882 look. And we started having world-class events just like we had. Our facility is small. Our stage is small. But we get major acts. We have Wynton Marsalis coming up from the Lincoln Center Jazz Orchestra. That's huge. And that's because we're known on the world stage. We have had um, Willie Nelson, as we talked about. We've had, um, we have Jane Lynch coming up from Glee. People know about us. We've had our own stars from the ballet guilds and from the schools. Those are stars that are born here too. So this building has become more of a community center in the last 20 years, 21 years, than it really was when it opened in 1882. Why are these performances important in historic theaters? Because historic theaters are the repositories for memories and emotions that have happened time and time again. There's this thread that is woven between the generations, and that's what historic theaters do. They provide the backdrop for an amazing tapestry of emotions, of experiences. It's a performance. It's going home and talking about it and having that adrenaline rush. That's what historic theaters do. There's a lot that theater accomplishes beyond just being and entertainment for an audience. Uh, it's, uh, it's the only art form that really connects the actors to the audience. The doors of the Abbeville Opera House opened on October 10th, 1908. And uh, at that time, uh, a lot of road companies were coming out of New York City, and one of the most popular tours for the vaudeville circuit was from New York to Richmond, Virginia, and then from Richmond on to Atlanta. So from the 1880s on, every major road company was coming through Abbeville on the way to performing in Atlanta, and the community decided, if we had a theater facility here, we could sponsor a lot of these New York shows. So they wrote to, uh, to New York, to the Keith Circuit, which was one of the popular vaudeville circuits at the time, and uh, told them about what they were thinking about. The Keith Circuit sent them the ground plans to a theater where a lot of vaudeville shows were produced. And uh, eight years later, the historic Abbeville Opera House opened its doors. The Abbeville Opera House, though, will remind you of uh, a lot of the Broadway theaters that you see in Manhattan to this day. Uh, it's 75 feet to our grid. Uh, another 25 or 30 feet to the ceiling. So this wonderful 7,800 square foot stage back there, when you add that together and consider that that stage floor is on the second floor and we have a costume and storage area beneath the stage floor, that makes our back wall one of the largest freestanding brick walls left in the country. The Abbeville Opera House was first restored to its original turn of the century condition way back in 1968, and it paved the way for the uh, restoration and the revitalization of the entire uh, Abbeville County. About 85% of our attendance comes not just from outside Abbeville, but outside the state of South Carolina as well. We have tour buses from North and South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Tennessee, uh, who come here on a regular basis to see the many different shows here that we do at the Abbeville Opera House. 
it means so much. I mean, as long as it's been here in the entertainment and the way it's affected the community and drawn people from all over the upstate counties, we need to keep it going. The creativity, watching the play come together, watching everything form, it's just a wonderful experience. And you bond with the cast members, it's a great time. To sit in the audience and watch a show here, you're actually part, the actors on the stage and the audience, the interaction between them in a theater this size is just amazing. Um, it's, it's really something to watch. People have been um, coming to this spot for almost 300 years to have performances, um, musicals, and chamber music. Um, the first theater in America was built on the site in 1736. It was called the Dock Street Theater. And it opened um, with the recruiting officer, which was the first play in America. And um, then uh, it disappears, probably burned down. We don't know exactly what happened to it. They built a hotel on the site um, uh, about 1800. And in the 1930s, the WPA, a federal works project, um, took over the building and inside of the shell of the old hotel, they built a new theater called the New Dock Street Theater, which was opened in 1937. Although they made it look like a theater that was built in 1736. They gutted the um, hotel room area, which is what we're sitting in now, and then rebuilt a um, 1700 theater in its place. Uh, 460 odd seating. When I give a tour in here, I will seat my visitors behind me here in the, uh, in the balcony, and I'll stand in box O, which is up right here on the stage, but I can actually speak in a normal voice in that box, and they can hear every word I say, which is a very great tribute to the men and women who designed this building. Hang up or move out! We've been performing here for over 40 years. Actually, the very first production was a production of A Christmas Carol back in 1978. Um, we produced that show about every yes. other year. Um, in fact, um, this year is our 21st Christmas Carol um, as well. We get to tell many of the stories of our own community in our own state. Um, we've had original plays like The Seat of Justice, which is about the Briggs versus Elliott case. Um, we did a play called Gershwin at Folly, which is about Gershwin writing Porgy and Bess. So we try not only to bring plays from New York and around the country, but to tell our own stories as well. We have many homes in Charleston that people walk through. You know, you go through as a tourist, these beautiful homes. In effect, they're museums. This is not a museum. This is a live building. And the men and women in here that are part of it be it the, the men and women on the stage or the people in the audience. It's an interactive piece. And to see it here live with human beings on the stage, there's a magnetism, there's a, a, a dynamics that is, you can feel it when you walk out the door.